Hello there, my name is Tyler, but over here on the interwebs I'm usually referred to as, uh, Tyler.psd. Anyways, today this video is the first of many I plan to do on my channel showcasing a budget computer composition for those who are looking to get the best bang for their buck. Today's build is going to focus on the entry level gamers who want to have endless hours of fun without the ridiculous price tag that you get along with unneeded gaming performance, peripherals, bells and whistles such as in my personal build. Instead, we're going to see how much performance we can squeeze out of a rig worth less than $500 for console peasants looking to join the hashtag PC Master Race. Everything you need, nothing you want, the ultimate upgrade ability. This build guide starts now. Enjoy! BitPhoenix, one of the most renowned case manufacturers within the hardware industry, known for ergonomics and clever minimalism, also brings to the table an entry-level grade product, the BitPhoenix Neos. This tower features a sleek and stylish body, excellent build quality, and ample space inside for hardware upgrades and added accessories, all in a unit that fits into our red and black theme set for this build. The BitPhoenix Neos ATX Mid Tower is taking the market by storm, all for under $40. Aside from the complicated product label, the GAH81D3 by Gigabyte shares next to nothing with its competitors in the same price bracket. The H81 is set apart from the pack through its size, being one of the very few entry level ATX motherboards you can find, and on top of this, the board features two PCIe X1 slots and three PCI slots, along with of course your graphics card PCIe X16 connection which is unbelievable value if you plan on adding extra PCI connections such as an internal Wi-Fi adapter or sound card. Another thing to note about this Gigabyte board is that out of the box you'll find four USB 3.0 ports, which is uh, four more than you would find elsewhere. With Gigabyte's ultimate durability guarantee, I couldn't say no slotting this into the build, running you just under $65. In a budget build, there will always be an argument whether to choose to go with AMD or Intel in the CPU department. And most of the time it changes as new and upcoming processors flood the market from both manufacturers. With this being said, as of right now the correct choice would be the Pentium G3258, a processor that just has way too much potential to pass up. With a base clock speed of 3.2GHz and two less cores than most of Intel's competitors, you may think that they were crazy putting such a product on the market. However, if you look deeper into it, even the ratings do the talking, with more than twice the amount of positive feedback as the direct AMD equivalent. Why is this true? Well, the G3258 is like an angry chicken on steroids. If you push it a little, it won't peck your eyes out, but it probably will frighten you with its insane overclock performance. And even if this is your first build, you may be hesitant to overclock your CPU altogether. Even the smart overclocking presets you'll find in our motherboard's BIOS will be plenty enough to run the AMD out of town based on gaming performance. Granting an average 10 to 15 frames per second over the AMD 760K, a CPU that is $10 more. Being able to reach 4.5 GHz with ease on the stock cooler and 4.7 GHz or higher on something like a $15 to $20 aftermarket cooler, this Pentium is no slouch. For under $80, the G3258 is a no-brainer. In this guide, we choose to stay with the stock Intel heatsink as it illustrates extremely low temperatures at stock clock speeds and an average temperatures when overclocking, even at full load. However, if you feel like you want to get the most performance out of your processor and you know your way around the BIOS, then upgrading to something such as a Hyper 212 EVO isn't such a bad idea, which will be linked in the description down below. G-Skill has been around longer than I've been alive and their product quality and reliability on a budget definitely backs their elderly track record. We went with a single stick of G-Skills DDR3 Ripjaws X-Series random access memory clocked at 1866MHz for our build. RAM is running cheap these days, so higher frequencies can be found at lower prices. We went with 1866 rated RAM over 1600 MHz, which has been known as the sweet spot for budget builds for a while, only because the higher frequency RAM is currently directly competitive price-wise. The higher clock speed is also a very good fit for the build because any multitasking capability lost in our processor with only two cores is made up with our boosted RAM frequency. 
We also went with one 8GB stick instead of two 4GB sticks in the build because it allows for you to double your RAM storage down the road by adding a second 8GB stick, completing a 16GB dual channel package, probably my favorite combination in size for random access memory as of right now. A single 8GB stick of Ripjaws X is sold for around $80. With a build on a budget mindset, the most important focus of the rig has to be the video card. This is where we will spend the most money. In this case, we will be using an ASUS R7 250X, an excellent aftermarket AMD card from an excellent aftermarket manufacturer. With 1GB of the newer faster GDDR5 VRAM, games will run smoothly, and micro stuttering, a common problem with the GDDR3 VRAM, will not be present. The R7 250X has been known and loved for its admirable price to performance ratio and ability to keep power consumption to a minimum, producing only 95 watts TDP. A slightly overclocked GPU that stays cool and quiet makes this card hard to beat for the $130 price tag ASUS has been proud to present. In the storage department, we are going to with a drive that is made by one of my personal favorite hard drive manufacturers, Western Digital. 500 gigabytes is more than enough space to store all of your games and game DLC, alongside media such as photos, video, and music. The 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue Series drive is fast enough to do what you need it to, all in a package just under $55. To no surprise, the final piece of our hardware puzzle for our $500 build is a power supply that I've used in every single budget PC I've built. Corsair has been praised for this PSU, which comes in a regular non-modular and a modular version, and is probably labeled as one of the most reliable power supplies with an 80 plus bronze certification. With ample capacity, the Corsair CX 430W PSU is a clear winner for this build, with lots of room left over for future upgradability, all for $55. After mail-in rebates, tax, and shipping costs, the grand total for our build comes to $497.96. Damn, son! So there it is, my take on the best of the best hardware you can buy as of March 2015 for under $500. As always, car pricing is changing as the market fluctuates and newer, better products are introduced, so you'll find individual part pricing linked in the description below, along with the complete build list. You can also find some common upgrades and additional hardware that may be useful to your specific needs also linked below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a rating and subscribe to the channel for more of my content. Thanks for watching and happy building. Buh bye bye